Good afternoon from NYHS Kids. My name is uh, Saudin. And in today's game, uh, we'll study Paul Morphy's game uh, number six. So um, this game is also very cool, very short, 14 moves. And that's the reason I choose it because uh, we want to look at those short games. So let's see. Pawn moves to e4. Paul Morphy is white. e5. Knight to f3. Knight to c6. And pawn to d4. So I really like this move and we need to learn more about this move. See, I know many of you are playing bishop to c4. Right? That's the move most of the kids are playing. Or even knight c3. Right? I don't know why, but that's what happens all the time in the chess games with the kids. But this move is very interesting because, uh, look, you are pushing the pawn and opening both of your bishops, right? So the game is very active. And, um, and I noticed that not many kids really can defend themselves against the move like this. Now, what happened here? is the black capture with a knight. Uh, look, this game, um, this game, let's see, was played in uh, 1850. So probably the players at that time didn't know, but the best move is to capture with uh, with a pawn, right? Now, capturing with a knight, and uh, Paul Murphy takes on e5. Now, by playing this move, right, the queen is attacking the knight on d4. Knight move to e6. Um, I guess not, it's not going to uh, be possible for us to see many games for knight move to e6. I, I cannot remember many, but I, especially after e4 and e5, knight on e6 is kind of strange, strange place for a knight. Bishop goes to c4. Right? So white is developing the pieces very nicely. Black plays knight to six, and here we're going to stop the game. Look, Paul Morphy plays a move that's really hard to play. Not easy, not easy to play this kind of move. He's sacrificing the the knight, right? But why is this happening? It's happening because he knows um, he knows a uh, uh, rules about the attack on the king. So he's going to try to open up the king and um, and attack, right? So look, he's giving this knight here for, uh, for a pawn. Now, king takes, right? What else can king, I mean, this is an attack, right? What else can black do? He has to take, right? And now bishop e6. Watch this. Now, pawn cannot take. That's the, um, if pawn takes, right, maybe actually after queen d8, black, black uh, had this move, right, check. Probably white has to, to, to move back and uh, the trade, trade would happen like this. So let's see what's the outcome. Three, four, five, six, seven pounds against three, four, five, six. Maybe this was better for Black than what happened in the game because he lost so quickly, <laughs> right? So this was an option. But uh, the Black King moved to e8. And um, now Paul Morphy brings his bishop back. And let's see what is the outcome of this combination when he played knight f7. Look, let's see. He played knight f7. And uh, now he's bringing his bishop back. The black king moved, cannot make a castling anymore. So it is in the center of the board and it's going to be attacked. Right? So I don't know. This definitely is not good for black. Right? So bishop moved to c5. And now Paul Morphy goes into the attack by pushing the pawn and trying to to uh, remove this knight because the knight is a good defender of the black king. But without the knight, the king is really going to be in a dangerous position. Queen e7. So we still cannot take the knight because it's a pin, right? 
castling. And now black plays knight to g8. But what else? Because he doesn't have a good move for the knight. He cannot take, right? Because the rook goes to e1 and pin. So he moved to g8. And this shows you that the opening that black played is not good because he has to move his pieces backwards, right? So the king is in, in, a, in the center of the board, it's in trouble. Now, we are looking at this game from the wide side, right? So we have to learn to attack the king when something like this happens, when the pieces are moving backwards. You have to mobilize your white pieces as soon as possible, bring them into the center of the board. So knight c3, the first move. Look, knight may jump to d5, attack the queen, and it's already in, in attacking position. Right? Black plays c6 to stop that. Now knight moves into e4. Look, knight is in a great position in the center of the board, threatening to play bishop to g5, threatening to play knight d6. This bishop is attacked. Look at this position of the knight, knee four. White is bringing the piece into the center and ready to attack the black king. Pawn to b5, right? Black, I guess black just doesn't know what to do here. It was better to, to move something else. I mean, to get any of those pieces out, like maybe knight h6. Check. Now, this is a great check, right? Because if the bishop takes, then of course we're not gonna take with a queen, we'll take with a pawn. And now this pawn is also a great attacking piece and then the rook comes and starts attacking an open file. So the black king is really in trouble here. I hope you can see this. I hope you can see that those two bishops that you have and uh, the rook, the queen, the pawn on d6 creating a tremendous attack on the black king, all right? So let's see. Now, the black um, black did not um, capture after d6, played this move, and now white plays excellent move and wins the game. And this is the last move that happened in the game. Bishop to g5, pin, right? And this is where the black stopped the game uh, because the game is lost. Queen takes on g5, knight to seven, fork. And, and of course, white would win the queen and that's a big advantage. And of course, um, we are going to win this game with a white side, right? So let's see now, let's go back and see um, what happened. What are the most important moves? Knight f3, knight c6, pawn to d4. First, I really would like to see that you are practicing this kind of move in the after school programs before you play them in the chess tournaments. Right? If you can practice this in the after school programs and learn about and then apply in the chess tournaments, this would be great. Because this kind of move can bring you a lot of success and you can win many games with playing pawn to d4. Now, if you are black, you don't want to take this with a knight. You want to capture with a pawn, right? And if the knight takes on d4, I think the easiest for kids to play is uh, this move, knight to f6, right? Attacking the pawn on, uh, on e4. Right, you can also play bishop c5, but sometimes I'm scared of this uh, trick. Like kids, they play. Um, I see like sometimes kids they make mistake like this, and then they lose the piece here, knight c6, right? And then the bishop takes on c5. But what you can do, you can play. Uh, of course, um, if someone, if you want to play bishop c5, then here you have to play queen f6. That that's okay. But um, if you are black, you can play this move. It's easy to play. 
uh, 9 to 6, right? Now, so that's what you need to do with the black side. But the white, black made a mistake. And um, here, the most important is this move, right? So look at this. Pay attention how even in the game number five, Paul Murphy captured on F7, sacrificed his knight. And here, he's sacrificing. Now, the question is, uh, after bishop e6, what will happen if um, king takes on e6? Um, th this, this move, of course, um, is, is dangerous, right? Because um, the black king goes into the center of the board. But to be honest with you, I'd rather play this kind of move than go back to, to e6, right? I don't see the checkmate here right away on d5. So maybe this was a better option to take instead of going uh, back to e8 and allow white such a attack, right? If nothing, black is here a piece up, right? Yes, my king is in a, in a trouble in the center of the board, but uh, black is a piece up. Who, who knows? Maybe you can survive this kind of game with a black side. So I'd rather take on e6 than go back to e8 because I know if I go back to e8, I'm going to lose for sure. But with this move, king e6, yeah, sure, still still, it's very dangerous and it's bad, but um, um, but who knows, you know, but better chances for black than the other way, right? So that's um, that's a little bit analysis of, of this uh, this game, right? Some uh, some nice attack, you know. What what's important about those Paul Morphy's games, you know, you have to you have to learn about the attack, right? You see, like moves like this, e5 and castling, right? Paul Morphy always makes a castling and goes in then into the attack with his uh, rocks, right? And bringing the pieces into the attack, all the pieces into the attack. You cannot attack just uh, with the uh, you know, one or two pieces, you need more power. And and that's what you get here, right? Look at this, knight gets into the attack and and uh, the game ends up after this move, right? Okay, it's, um, this was a game number six and I will see you in our game number seven. Bye-bye.